Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph this absolute value uh, equation, inequality, I'm sorry. So to graph the absolute value in, um, equa inequality, um, basically, you know, I like to kind of think of this as graphing an absolute value equation and then using our test points to determine, you know, where our shading is going to be and so forth. So the first thing I want to do is put this into kind of like our slope intercept form, or at least into our transformation form. It doesn't matter if it's an inequality or equation. Put into this transformation, the transformations are going to be the same. So the first thing I need to do is I need to solve for this y. So I need to get rid of the, um, the minus signal of the absolute value of 1 half x. So I'm going to add the absolute value of 1 half x to both sides. All right, now I have y is less than or equal to 8 plus absolute value of 1 half x. Now we could also rewrite that absolute value of 1 half x plus 8. And I think that's preferred form because you can see that that is now like in your transformation form for you. OK, so um, now what we need want to do is determine are we going to have a shaded or a, oops, we don't need this table. Are we going to have a, sh um, a dashed or a solid line? And the difference between those two is if it's dashed, that means our graph is not going to be a part of our solution. And if it's solid, that means our graph will be a part of our solution. So basically what I'm looking at to do here is um, I'm going to look at my inequality symbol. And whenever my inequality is or equal to, less than or equal to, or greater than or equal to, I'm going to have a solid line. All right, so that's nice. That means I can just graph with a solid line, and then I'll determine my shading at the very end. So now I need to graph this. So to graph this, I need to identify, well, what are my transformations? What is happening to my graph? Because here's the parent graph, y equals absolute value of x. That's what it looks like. What is this 1 half and this 8 going to do? Well, the 1 half, what that's going to do is that's going to stretch my graph horizontally. And the 8 is going to shift my graph up, because you can see my new vertex, since I'm not adding or subtracting anything, adding my h, my x-coordinate on my vertex is still going to be 0. Well, this vertex is at 0, 0. So if the x-coordinate is 0, that means I'm not moving left or right. But now, since I'm adding 8 outside my absolute value, that tells me I'm going to be shifting my graph up 8 units. So now my vertex is um, 0, 8. So I'm going to go up 8 units. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Now again, I told you um, that this 1 half is going to uh, stretch my graph. So usually, we like to just go over 1, up 1, over 2, up 2. But that was when you did not have, any, um, when you did not have a b being multiplied by your x. So basically, now what we're doing is we're multiplying that by 1 half. So the best way to kind of understand and see how that works is just to create a table of values. And what's nice about the absolute value um, function or equation is that it has a line of symmetry. Meaning, all I really need to do is like pick two points. Any points I pick to one side, I can reflect and regraph them to the right. So since I have my, um, since my inequality has this 1 half in here, I'm going to choose values that are very, uh, are going to be very simple or very easy to simplify by multiplying by 1 half. So I'm going to choose negative 4, negative 2, 0, 2, and 4. Now again, uh, we already know what 0 is. When, it, when our um, x value is 0, we know the y value is 8. So if I can just pick two points to the left or two points to the right, I can just reflect them over. So to find the value of those two points, basically what I need to do is just plug in those values. So y is less than or, or let's use an equation because we want to find the value. We want to know what is y equal to when x equals this value. So therefore, I have 1 half times negative 4 plus 8. So negative 4 times 1 half is going to be negative 2. Absolute value of negative 2 is 2. 2 plus 8 is 10. So if negative 4 is 10, that means positive 4 is going to be 10. Now let's do negative 2. 1 half times negative 2 is going to be negative 1. Absolute value of negative 1 is positive 1. Positive 1 plus 8 is 9. So if negative 2 is 9, that means positive 2 is 9. So let's go and plot these points. So negative 2 is 9, and negative 4 is 10. Then what I can do is now I can just go over 1, 2, 3, 4, go over and reflect these points. And then, ladies and gentlemen, I just connect 
And there you go. That is my wonderful absolute value in the, oh, da, la, la, I keep on wanting to do this. I was doing, I was graphing absolute value equation for us. So we need to test. Are we shading above or below our absolute value? So to do that, we need to use a test point. And the best test point to pick, as long as your graph is not going through it, is 0, 0. So to use 0, 0 as our test point, I'm going to, or uh, what I need to do is plug in 0, 0 into our equation, or our inequality, I, my apologies. So I have 0 in for y is less than or equal to absolute value of 1 half times 0, absolute value plus 8. 0 times 1 half is 0, absolute value of 0 is 0 plus 8. So 0 is less than or equal to 8. That is true. Since the point outside the, or below the absolute value uh, graph is true, that means all the points below are going to be true. And then you just go ahead and graph like that. And that means all the points inside or above your absolute value uh, inequality are going to be false. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you graph an absolute value inequality. Thanks.